Welcome back to Trigger Time TV. I'm your host, Mike Lamb. In this next segment, Jim Gilliland of Shadow 6 is going to talk to us about extending the range on our rifles out past 500 yards. Hey folks, I'm Jim Gilliland here with Shadow 6. The first thing I want to talk about in this episode is long gun precision marksmanship and how to get your equipment for it, for your rifles and ammunition. Now, when we start off, we want to go with ammunition first, and I think it's imperative we start with that because you need to pick the proper ammunition for what you're going to want to do. You're not going to shoot a 22 long rifle at 1,000 yards. You're going to have to pick something that will actually make it there. So you might as well pick your ammunition first. Now, in this hand, I've got a match grade 260 Remington for Black Hills, and in this hand, I've got a 308 that's in a hunting cartridge, also by Black Hills. Now, the once I've picked my ammunition, which is 260, is my long range precision marksman, primary ammunition, but you can see the bullets are different. One is a, a match grade bullet, which is designed to have external ballistics and not terminal ballistics. This is supposed to cut the wind and fly efficiently and hit paper or target. This doesn't fly so efficiently, but has a lot of great terminal effects once it hits soft target because it's used for hunting. So make sure you pick the right bullet as well. Moving on, once you pick what ammunition you want, you can decide how you want to put it in your gun through your actions. Now, whether you go with a bolt action rifle, like this R Brothers rifle, or whether you go to an automatic gun like this Seekins Precision Gun, it's up to you. They make these guns both in just about any platform or cartridge that you want to. So, in saying that, pick wisely. Understanding for precision marksmanship, the bolt action rifle is generally easier for people to shoot than the automatic gun. So, it's another thing to think about. Once you've got the action you want, then the barrel comes next. Whether you've picked a high quality action or you've picked a lower quality action or a cheaper one is nominal compared to this. If you don't have an absolute top quality barrel, then it's not gonna matter what your actions are. If you have an absolute extremely accurate top quality barrel, then that's what's gonna truly decide what your accuracy potential is. This is where your accuracy comes from. So make sure you take good time with that. Once you've got your action and your barrel together, then you gotta put your stuff around it that makes you be able to shoot it. And that comes into your stocks. Now as a traditional stock like this R Brothers has, it's got an adjustable cheek piece and a magazine and things like that, is one way to go. But if you're looking for something a little more modern, you can go with a chassis system like this that McCree Precision makes. It's got a adjustable, um, Butt stock that's folding and you can add a magazine and it's a one piece aluminum design. <clears throat> Not to take anything away from this stock because it's absolutely a great stock, it's just another option for you to decide what's best for you. On the automatic side, the biggest things you want to make sure of on your stock stuff is that when your handguard goes on, that is a free floated uh, front handguard. And that keeps, just like on the precision rifle, it keeps the barrel off of anything once it leaves the action and it gives you better harmonics. So you can shoot this more accurately with this type of handguard. Once we get off of that, and making sure that we've got a great quality trigger or at least a trigger that's tuned. Now, personally, I like to stay two and a half pounds or higher. As long as it's crisp, two and a half pounds will do everything you need it to do and keeps you safe, just in case. Once you get those together, then you gotta start putting your scope on. And to put a scope on, you need a high quality set of rings. Now these Seekers Precision Rings is what I normally use in a lot of my precision rifles, but these are two piece rings that go to a single base. And there are pros and cons of those. And this is a different type if this works better for you. And this is a single piece ring that has throw levers so I can take it on and off more of a quick detach. If you're not going to be taking your scope on and off, I highly suggest you go with a set of rings. And if you are gonna be taking it off, or if it's a combat gun, then I'd go with a one piece like this that you can take it off more easily. The scope is the next thing we're going to talk about, and as you can see, this is a lot larger scope on this rifle than it is on my Seekins Precision Rifle, and the reason being is I plan on shooting this gun a lot further. This 260 has a terminal uh, capability of about 1,500 yards. This scope here is a 3.5 to 21, and allows me to, to reach all the way that far out and to see targets clearly enough to be able to engage them. This scope here is also a Bushnell, and it's a 1 to 6 and it will allow me to see the close-up targets for uh, fast engagements and about 600 yards where I can really hit targets uh, at, at the potential of this rifle. So building all these together, and once I've got my pieces and parts, then you can need to get them out to the range. Once you got them out to the range and you spend your time, your training, it's ammunition, and all of the things that you've learned here and you put them all together, then you can get a better picture of what you really need. And once that's done, you get your stuff together, 
you get accurate, get some friends out on the range and see how much better you are than them because you took the time to figure out what it was that you needed and they didn't. So keep that in mind. This is Jim Gillen from Shadow Six. You guys hunt smart.